Um, so just to refresh your memory, if you're not entirely uh, sure about what content we did in the last couple of years for a blog, but uh, here we go. I'll do a quick review. The a blog material that was published in 2018 called Fresh Start Skills and Grammar. Uh, we did the 100 level, uh, uh, the one, the 100th level uh, course book and 101 course book in the same year. Came out in the same year, and then in the follow up uh, year. Uh, we then tackled the A block uh, all in one skills and grammar book for 102. OK, so this again is an all in one solution. And these are the offers that we have for the student and teacher. I'll start first with the student offer. So there's a print edition with a six month digital access. The price there actually refers to the price. Uh, and you have to compare it to a skills and grammar book from the competition to get a better sense. And I, I know that separate skills and grammar book uh, uh, comes to about $60, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, our print edition of the all-in-one skills and grammar book is $49.95. And the digital edition is available at $39.96. It also includes a free grammar quick guide that is also downloadable on our platform. It's a 24 page self study guide for grammar. Um, and also included for students here is the 800 self correcting questions on my CEC zone that includes, excuse me, that includes comprehension, vocabulary, and also grammar. I'll come to that in just a second when we look at the teacher's edition, which is included with your order, of course. It includes the answer key and teacher's notes, um, seven supplementary tasks for evaluation purposes available on our platform in PDF and Word version, which means they are modifiable. DVD with optional subtitles. You'll see here in the pop up an example of the kind of this is a screen uh, screenshot of one of our subtitles. Uh, that is optional. Again, these are optional subtitles. You can turn them on and off. Uh, and all transcripts, of course, of all of our videos and audios that are included in this title. Again, 800 self-correcting questions in vocabulary, comprehension, and grammar, also accessible. And Genevieve will go through the digital component after I've finished going over the content of Fresh Take. So essentially, why what we decided to do in our evaluation of what was necessary on the market was to think about your wish list. And it was essential that we really get a good sense of what you wanted. And so we focused on that one question: what was what's on your wish list when it comes to a block, a block 102 material? And these were the results of our work. Four part structure with themes, a grammar section, a writing section, and references. Fewer themes to facilitate completion. Stories and literary excerpts. More writing opportunities. Speaking projects. And then standalone grammar and writing practice should you want to skip one of the themes that is available in the workbook. So I'll go, I'll unpack each of these so you get a better understanding of what it is that we are offering. So we really listened to what you were looking for. So first of all, we started with a, a four part structure. Again, a grammar section, writing and research section, and a references section. In each of our themes, there's one short story or literary excerpt, and a literary excerpt um, can include uh, the excerpt from On the Road by Jack Kerouac, um, and we also have The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. And also includes one informative reading. So in each theme, you have one short story 
and one informative reading. There are two videos, grammar and context activities with one reading, which I'll show you right here. So there are two ways to teach the grammar. The first way is to go through the theme and spot the grammar and context rubrics in the margins of the book and notice the highlights that are associated in the authentic text with the grammar and context. And you'll notice here in the grammar and context rubric, there's a mention of for information on types of speech, go to grammar page 155. So that's your first way you can go to the actual grammar section and immediately do the practice on this grammar point. In this case, it's direct and indirect speech. Or students can go to the following the subsequent pages, go to an exercise within the, the theme itself, within the unit, and practice this particular grammar point. So there are two ways in the grammar uh, self, in the grammar section itself and also in the theme itself. What we also have included in each of our themes is progress progressively more difficult writing activities after each reading or video. So what that means is that you'll see here as it pops up at the start of a typical um, unit for writing, <laughs> students are asked to write a 75 to 100 word paragraph on the relevance of a short story in this case. And then in the next step, um, students are asked to research and outline a social injustice occurring in Canada and then include detailed specific based on that particular theme. I apologize, my dog is right behind me. The second step, using your research and outline from writing on page 66. So this, this is where the progressiveness of this uh, writing, um, uh, of, this, of the writing progression really starts to evolve. And students have, can dive even deeper into the topic in this case uh, it's on indigenous issues. And then by the end of the unit itself, students are then focusing on a specific writing theory. In this case, it's the argumentative, uh, the argumentative essay. Okay, so in every one of the themes, we have this writing progression. We can teach about writing in two ways. As I said earlier, there's a separate writing and research section in the book. So even if you don't go through the theme, you can actually um, just skip right to the writing section and focus on one of these topics. So if you decide to do a unit, um, unit one uh, focuses on topic sentence controlling idea and paragraph writing. Unit two focuses on essay structure and opinion essay. Unit three persuasive essay or argumentative essay. Unit four cause and effect essay. Um, or um, just skip, if you need to, one of these themes. Go straight to the standalone writing and research section that also has vocabulary activities and strategies for doing research. And each of these writing topics are covered in the standalone writing and research section. Okay, so the writing and research section is autonomous from the themes. You do not have to do all the themes in the book. Um, and also in each of our units, in the four themes in those four units, is an end of unit speaking project. And here's an example of a speaking project that focuses on debating. In the grammar section, it's standalone grammar, so there is no need to actually go through the themes. You can actually do the grammar, the 26 grammar points autonomously. And these are the topics that we cover from the present, past, and future forms and tenses to uh, modals, conditionals, noun forms, and aspects, reported speech, passive voice, and so on. And of course, we also include gerunds and infinitives that seem to be a very important grammar point to put at this 102 level. The other solution, of course, if students want to do a little bit of self-study, there's a free grammar guide that's included with their uh, skills and grammar book. And this again is downloadable on the platform. There's a standalone, again, the standalone writing and research section includes these topics on 
clarity, topic sentence, essay basics, language register, descriptive essay, argument of essay, um, models on the more difficult essays, and research and the infamous crap test. Um, the writing and research section begins with a, a very important topic of clarity at this level. Students have trouble with um, rephrasing things in plain or direct language, um, avoiding passive voice um, for certain students with specific uh, first language needs um, that might transfer this error to English, um, and also deleting redundancies from spoken English when writing. And of course, the references section includes a very, a very um, comprehensive section on vocabulary strategies, including how to use a print dictionary or any dictionary for that matter, whether it's online or in print. Um, pronunciation, that's important to follow, and also um, important lists. So let's go jump right into the themes, the controversial topics that we were asked to develop with the 102 that has also, these topics also have literary angles to them. Um, so let's start with unit one or theme one, coming of age or not. The outcomes uh, in terms of texts, students are exploring how to leave behind adolescence and start adulthood. Um, the grammar focus for this particular Theme is on simple present and simple past um, and going over most of the verb tenses. And the writing outcome is paragraph writing. Theme one, the focus question is, what does being an adult mean to you? So we introduce this theme with the short story by John Updike, a and P, story of a young man who's working part time in a grocery store and realizes that perhaps doing what he does for a living is not necessarily what his passion is. The video um, and panel discussion um, that we have is about parents who filed the lawsuit against their 30-year-old son to evict him from home. Uh, an informative reading um, goes into how employers should manage um, employees who misuse social media. And another video interview of one of the famous um, performing artists of this generation, Alicia Cara, who's from Brampton, Ontario. Theme two focuses on students' expectations and how do we find fulfillment in an uncertain world Strangely, this was the focus question um, <laughs> from last year, and it seems to be quite fitting for this time. So we look at a short story by John Collier called The Chaser about being careful what you wish for. Um, there's an informative reading why some human rights may have created an entitlement culture, students exploring the issue of entitlement. Uh, video, the first video is a feature report of an engineering student strategy to find meaningful employment in what is a very uncertain labor market within Canada and globally. And the second video feature looks at um, a university program in Saskatchewan that guarantees employment um, or students receive uh, a free year of tuition. Very interesting. Um, concept that appears to be very successful. Who's justice? Social justice in Canada's justice system. The grammar focuses on reported speech and the writing outcomes are argumentative and persuasive writing. Who and what does justice best serve in Canada? So obviously the best short story we could think of, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, a very impor important cautionary tale in English literature. Um, the informative reading looks at um, our own um, issues that we are dealing with within Canada about Indigenous rights, 
and exploring how apologies and settlements are probably not enough for reconciliation. There's a video interview of firsthand accounts of injustices during the 60s scoop of Indigenous children, uh, which is a very uh, thoughtful uh, documentary about uh, their experiences. And a video also, uh, the final video looks at tackling fake Indigenous status cards, which seems to be um, an example of cultural appropriation within certain provinces. And theme four, success in another language. Um, benefits of second language, which students at this level obviously understand, but we look at more deeply, not just at the English language, but all languages. Multilingualism is also explored and the importance of understanding more than just one language, whether it's English or not. So what are the benefits and drawbacks of learning one or more languages is the main focus question. With a reading about the many great writers who had trouble with English in their early careers. Um, a video interview with Jan Martel about the creative benefits of being raised uh, multilingual or, poly or bilingual. Understanding more non-native speakers of English um, and finding strategies to better understand non-native speakers. And literary text, well, um, an excerpt of On the Road by Jack Kerouac uh, looks at the stylistic um, differences between the linguistic worlds in uh, Kerouac's uh, works, um, specifically On the Road, uh, but we also mention a couple of others uh, that are part of the activities. So I'm going to wrap this up with um, Basically, reminding you of the student offer here, again, $49.95 for the print edition, $39.96 for the digital, a grammar quick guide of 24 pages. It's free and downloadable on our platform, 800 self-correcting -correct questions, the teacher's offer, uh, an answer key with teacher's notes, seven supplementary tasks for evaluation purposes, PDF and modifiable word versions are available for all of these supplementary tasks a DVD with optional subtitles, um, all transcripts, and of course the 800 self-correcting questions for vocabulary, comprehension, and grammar. So a salute to all of you who are helping their students cope in this uh, uncertain time. Um, and um, everything is gonna be all right. That seems to be the, the, um, the theme these days. Um, and and I just mentioned there in no way is this an endorsement for teaching gonna and certainly a good topic of discussion maybe for your students, thanks to Bob Marley. So I'm going to turn it over to Geneviève, unless Geneviève you have some chat questions already from participants. Oh, wait a minute. Um, everything I think is okay. I maybe have some, oh, I have some questions that are just entering um, the chat box at the moment. No, I have, uh, there was one for the teens, but you talked about it. At Sof for including Jan Martel. Um, why choose the f uh, one book format versus the combo? Could you try? Um... <laughs> okay, so I don't know if uh, maybe I'll, uh, uh, maybe I can uh, just wait. Uh, I can answer this question, or maybe wait if there are some more and go to the digital version. Or um, uh, I would say maybe to answer this question. Um, in fact, we, uh, Patrick, we've decided to go with the uh, one book because of all of the feedback we have from teachers, uh, because the, the books are uh, so pricey for the students and a lot of teachers want to have still grammar, but want to have the skills as well. So this is the way we found out to include everything. And this is uh, even uh, easier for the students to always have only one book to carry around. Um, and of course, um, the digital uh, is uh, maybe an option that will be uh, is uh, it was always available, but maybe will be more uh, an option that uh, teachers will take a look uh, at it uh, a little bit more on the website. Uh, so on the website is a one year access access and it gives uh, all of the uh, the same um, what I will maybe show you right now on the digital platform. So do you want me to share my screen right now, um, Patrick? Yeah. Just um, okay. Can you just confirm? 
from that uh, you are seeing my screen, Patrick. I'll go maybe just. Uh... Yep, absolutely. I can see it. OK, great. And I'll come back to the uh, chat box um, afterwards. So um, I just maybe want to say a little something about what you said uh, included with your order. So sometimes um, teachers think that when they uh, do uh, order the books that it comes directly with the order, but in fact, they need to confirm um, to let me know the number of groups, number of students, or just uh, about how um, many so I can uh, confirm and I can send you as well uh, your package. Uh, still, your package can be delivered at home as well, so it doesn't matter for me where I send it, and maybe it will be uh, something that will be uh, uh, great for this summer. So the package can uh, include the student book, the teacher's manual with the CD DVD, and of course, by email, you receive a five-year activation code, so you don't have to request a new one every uh, semester. Uh, what I like about our platform, uh, the feedback I do have from uh, from a lot of users is uh, it is uh, pretty easy, uh, easy to register. Uh, three simple steps. Uh, if your student already have a My CEC Zone or Mazon CRC uh, account, they can just keep the same. Let's say they have a, a CEC book in a French class or a, um, a physical ed class. Uh, they can uh, still keep the same account and just add a new um, a new uh, uh, content, uh, a new activation code. So if you already have an account, then uh, you will put your username and your password. But then uh, if it is the first time not yet registered here, uh, you just create an account in three simple steps. I can just show you, but I mean, uh, it is pretty easy. So just follow uh, your personal information, then your school information, and then uh, your account is created, and it's the same uh, way to do it for your students. So for right, uh, for the, the purpose right now, I'll just go into my account. Connection. I do have, you will see, I do have a lot of books, so all the CEC uh, books, but so the first page that it will open, if it is the first time that you open uh, the bookshelf, then you you won't have any. Um, let me just go directly to the uh, fresh collection. Uh, so if the first time you won't have any uh, content, right? So you have a little plus sign here at your top right, or this is the new um, menu. So little we call it the hamburger menu. So if you just click, all of your options will appear here. So appear here. I'll take a little uh, sip of water, sorry. So add a content and this is where you need to copy and paste um, the activation code that you would have received or for your students, the, the, the code that they have in their book that is attached to their book. Uh, it's not a loose uh, sheet. It is really attached under the cover of their book or if they buy an online activation code, they this is as well the same place where uh, they will submit their code to activate the content. So I'll just go back. Just go here. So uh, as uh, we were talking about the fresh take here, what as a teacher you will uh, see uh, appear uh, on your side is the skills book. And when once you, you are in a, in a teacher's mode, you always see your class license. This is different from the, te uh, the student one that is an individual license. You do have a folder with all of your resources, as Patrick uh, told earlier. Uh, you do have a folder that includes all of your videos. So if I click, uh, you can see that they're all classified uh, for each of the unit. So uh, each, each of the unit, you can retrieve all of the with subtitles or without subtitles, so they're all um, classified here, or uh, I'll show you in the ebook. You always have a little icon, a camera icon, or a media player icon that you can click on directly on the page to play the video. Uh, after the resources and the videos, sorry. Okay, I'll just maybe close this so I go back directly to Fresh Take. OK, so the same for the audios and you do have here all the uh, activities, the interactive activities. 
What I have to say is on the student side, they do always have their book that it includes their um, audios and their videos. So they do have access through the book and the uh, interactive activities, they're always locked by default. So if you're not decided yet, uh, will they be summative, formative? Don't worry, they can see they have access to uh, interactive, uh, interactive activities, but they cannot see the questions before you allow them by creating a group. So this is what will match your students. This is pretty easy to do. So the same uh, thing uh, happened on the student side. So they will join a group and the match will uh, be uh, with your settings. So maybe I can go through the uh, interactive activities to show you. I know this is a question that is a, a really important one. Um, you can see the questions. So you have all of the questions that are classified by a uh, category. So if you click directly on the category of the question, it will uh, allow you directly to see the question one by one as Patrick shown uh, on his uh, PowerPoint. So you can see here uh, in that particular basket, you have five questions and it's uh, a lot of multiple choice, but not always A, B, C or D. You can drag and drop. You can, um, there's a lot of uh, different options to uh, entertain your students and then um, they can uh, correct, try again, depending on your settings or continue. So I will show you the settings that are available because those are pretty interesting. So the way to, um, uh, like I said, to allow your students to have access to the interactive activities is by creating a group. So here, let's say I will modify the groups to create a new one. So I'll create a new group. So just to go back, I am in my fresh take. I click on the interactive activities folder and here I am. I have this little icon at the top with little uh, uh, two uh, persons and Oops, sorry, <laughs> wasn't meant to. And then uh, you just have to create a group. OK, so let's say uh, Wednesday group. Whoop. Create. And then you see you have your access key. This is a six uh, capital letters access key that you need to share with your students so they can join the group. You can, uh, when you press uh, OK, you can always access this in the menu in the um, group management here. So you can always retrieve if you didn't have time to uh, copy and paste. So don't worry about it. Uh, so if I just um, go back here, I will. Um, Wednesday. Here it is. Now I don't have any students, right? Oops. Perfect. So as you see, there's a little loading there. I'm in my Wednesday group. What just happened is that now I do have the option here to see um, and change the settings. So um, if you click here, show the settings you can see now everything is locked by default because this is a new group that i've just created i didn't play with the settings yet uh, so it's telling you sometimes i do have questions from teachers saying what uh, what are my settings where can i confirm so this is the way to just see just uh beside each basket what are the settings that um you are just with the um, particular exercise and then you have little wheel here. This is what allows you to change the settings. So once you click on the little wheel at your left, there's this um, option. This is all of your options that appear. So you can always click. So here I'm in team number one, vocabulary, but I can click, okay, same settings for vocab, comprehension, the watching. So you really choose and you can scroll down. So you can choose all at once. You can select all, but you really choose each basket. It really allows you to play with the settings. You can lock manually, you can unlock them, or you can set, uh, I'm at your left here, an accessibility period. So I can say start from now, uh, 2.36 until Friday, 5 p.m. So I can really uh, ask to um, unlock until, uh, lock and unlock until a particular period with the time as well. So really precisely for the mode, uh, what it is changing is if I click summative automatically instead of clicking all of the options one by one, 
it will always uh, allow you only one trial. It will hide the theory uh, for the grammar part. It will hide the um, the correction. If you can click formative and say, OK, so I'll let maybe only two trial. And display correction. Well, if I have two trials, then maybe I'll go with two, right? Because I don't want them to see the uh, the answer before uh, answering again the question. Uh, theory if available. So the theory is available uh, with a little grammar chart uh, for most of our titles, I would say. So before uh, answering the question, they can uh, take a look at the grammar chart. And um, a new option is you can randomize the order of your questions. So I would say it's interesting right now when you don't have the control and um, you want it to be summative, so you don't want them to communicate the answers. All the um, the question will be um, mixed up. So this is one of the uh, uh, pretty interesting option. Here in the little uh, in the middle, if I change my tab, this is the way to export uh, the results. There's another way I will show you after to see. But if you want, you're a, an Excel fan and you want to export in your uh, a personal document and play with averages and um, you can export an Excel file and every time you will export an Excel file. The title of this particular Excel file will be the date with the particular hour that you have requested it. And then um, the questions, uh, let's say here I maybe have too much, but what's interesting here, if you went through the question and you say, OK, I maybe only want three questions in the vocabulary section, you can hide, hide. <laughs> some uh, some questions or uh, if uh, there is one question that you do not cover in class, this is a subject that you did not cover with your students, you can get rid of this question. So and then uh, you apply. So if I click apply, my settings have been saved. What I do recommend as well, if you have many groups now, I just have uh, one group here, but if uh, let's say you have three groups and you want to put all the same settings, you can apply uh, in one click the same settings to all of your groups. So it will minimize again the number of clicks. So we all do uh, everything to simplify. So if I just go here and I close, um, so here are the settings. If I click here under the little, uh, just beside the wheel, I do have a little uh, kind of a graphic with a little page. If I click on it, now I don't have any, um, it's an empty group, but it will sh display the uh, in alphabetical order, the name of your students and for that particular basket. So this section is really basket by basket. So if you want to take a look at the vocabulary, vocabulary section and take a look at is it uh, mostly missed or mostly um, doing going well, you can take a look at uh, all of the questions all with all of the results. Um, every time it's a good answer, it's going to be in red, uh, in green, I would say, and uh, in uh, red, it is for um, a wrong uh, answer. So um, this is about the uh, the settings. Um, so as long as you don't apply any setting, I just want to remind you there will be a lot on the student side. So if you want them to be summative, no problem about this. Um, the ebook right now. So I just want to go back where I can go. There's many ways uh, to go. Um, this is um, this is what's um, good with uh, this uh, platform is you can go back right here at the top. I could have gone with my arrow back, but then I just went with the menu here. Um, oh yeah, right now there are tutorial that goes automatically asking you if you want to quit the tutorial or want to go to an overview because of uh, all of the many users um, uh, right now with the situation um, with um, so this is why you can uh, unlock, uh, you can uh, quit the tutorial into the uh, options as well. So here I am in the class license. So this is the all of the pages of the book. Um, it allows you to go through the digital version of the book. Uh, so there's many way to go through a particular page. So you can just scroll down here at the bottom with the little um, kind of arrow, I would say. Um, I can go directly into the table of contents. This is a digital table of contents. So if I click directly, um, it will um, it will go directly to this page. Uh, 
Uh, I can uh, as well, if I don't want to show all of the page, I just want to remember the most important ones in the favorites so I can click um, for a page uh, market and organize it as a favorite. Um, so let's say I'm on, I just want to go to um, the one that I saw earlier. Oh, oh yeah, I just want to say as well, because I don't see it because of a little camera icon here because I'm sh um, sharing my screen, but at the um, bottom right, you can click and uh, go directly onto a page. So um, with uh, what allows you to, uh, I just want to go to the videos we were talking about here. Here, the watching. So let's say on page 22, I want to click on page 22. Okay, I just want to click the tutorial here. Yes, for this section. Okay, so here I'm on the page, directly on the page 22. You always have this blue toolbar that allows you with all of the options for the ebook. Uh, if you don't want, you can minimize as well. Um, or you can put it on the other side, but I think it won't allow me because I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, so the, you can always zoom. I'm right now already enough zoom, I think, but you can zoom on a particular section of the text and you can go back uh, with the zoom. So the, the zooms allow you to, allows you to select a particular section. Here, this is for the display pages. So now I'm like um, a, a full, um, not full length, but uh, I'm wider, but just half of a page. I can go a full page or I can go double page if I am searching for a particular um, activity. So here I can see I have um, a watching activities. So what is interesting about is here you have answer key, right? This is the only one I didn't talk about in the menu at the bottom. So answer key. I can show on my page because I am, I am the teacher and I do have the class license, so I can show all answers at once. Sorry, I think. Or only one answer at a time. So I don't know, maybe it's not enough. I can just go to um, another page and go wider so you can see a little bit more. I'll go back to that display. Maybe it will be easier for you to see. So here, of course, here it's a development question, so you don't have any um, good question. But here you see, you can uh, show, display all the answers at once or only one answer at a time. So you can go and click, click, click. So you can really take your time and students will follow um, one after the other. So this is for all of our uh, textbooks, are for all. This is the way we've always been uh, working for a while in here. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot play videos while we are projecting the screen, but this is the little media. Um, oh, no, I think I can play just that you won't um, you won't hear, you will see. But so this is pretty simple. You can enlarge to go full screen Life. and you have always both. So the original one and the one with subtitles for um, maybe um, one or two students that will require require more uh, special needs. So you always have, and the same on the student side, they always have option to the videos as well uh, in their ebook. So this is a question sometimes I do get, they don't find the video, it's not, uh, they don't have the folder uh, apart that it is called videos. This is all only for the teachers, they always have in their ebook. So if I may continue about the little tools here, so you can annotate um, your version of the book. So of course, the students will always have uh, their version of the book, but if you want to annotate and to share, it's always a possibility. I think it was a question for um, maybe will increase in the um, future uh, to always uh, maybe go only with the digital version. So this is something that can be really interesting because um, the student, they can even uh, here, let's say I'm not in the answer key, hidden uh, on their side they can even uh, type in the answer and you could uh, share and see uh, their page with their actual answers that they have typed in this is the way they are working at the secondary levels so this is something that is um, uh, available for the CGIPs as well so you have the little tools here if you want to add text if you want to with the pencil um, let's say here you want to use like this or you prefer to go with the highlighter let's say with the yellow one in here following question as i said earlier the uh, favorites so, so if i click here and i go back into my favorites menu 
my page has uh, been added to the uh, uh, actual um, to the actual favorites. And then uh, I can add, this is another uh, pretty interesting, I can add some personal notes. So I can add a text. This is kind of a little post-it that you have. Um, you can uh, add directly personally into your version. If you click private note and you decide to share it with your students, then they will never have access to those notes. So really for you to decide if you want to share your notes or not. And it is asking you for each of the notes that you will, uh, and it will go directly uh, onto the page. So let's, it seems small, but it can go up to copy and paste one uh, page of a Word document. So let's say YOLO one, I say um, here it's important. And then I save it. See, I have this little icon and I just click and my note just appear and I can delete it uh, as soon as or I can modify it. Um, so this is about the um, little note. I can also add a link. So I can, it can be an hyperlink that I just decide to uh, type in the uh, the address and then add a title and see the logo is going to be different. So instead of having some little lines, it's going to be like an hyperlink. Um, as well, you can, that can be really interesting for English ESL courses and for um, online courses, add an audio file. For now, I don't want to do do it right now, but I can uh, register myself for a minute and share it with my students. So it could be great for pronunciation. So this is about um, how you can personalize your book. And every time the, sem the semester um, goes over, you, you always have, you always keep your note and you can just um, personalize it over and over again. And then it becomes your, uh, instead of taking like the pictures and putting them into a PowerPoint, then the books, um, are becoming your um, what you all personalize and you can share. So what I was saying is here, you retrieve little two persons uh, the icon. So let's say here, just a sec. I don't know what. Um, okay. So I just click uh, with my uh, my group. And I just here you see there is a share your personal annotations with this group. So if you click here with this group, I will be able then uh, to share my notes and they will be able um, to see into my notes. So they always keep their individual license, but they can go in the same thing as you in the toolbar. They can go into my book or if you have a student into your um, your group, you can go and see uh, Chiara's uh, workbook. You can see John's workbook. So you can go through the workbook of all of your students and see if they have typed in an answer, if they have highlighted something in the text. So um, they have the same toolbar as you do have on the teacher teacher side. So um, this is where I think the uh, opportunity will be um, pretty interesting with everything that is happening right now and I can see from the feedback from the feedback from the um, the teachers that I do have that uh, we're using our books but you know didn't have any much time to explore the um the uh, the, the website the platform the digital platform so um just maybe if I want to go over um the complete platform uh, so I went into all of the options at the bottom I went into everything Thing in the toolbar, I went into all of the options of the settings for the e um, the e uh, interactive activities. Uh, here, maybe at the top right, um, these if you want to enlarge and uh, go full screen. So this is the last icon here. Uh, if I am searching for like I did earlier, a particular title. Um, if uh, I want to have like a whiteboard, maybe less in English class. Um, this one is uh, to report. Uh, a technical problem to report a content problem. Of course, you can always communicate directly uh, with me. This is always a pleasure to help directly the uh, teachers so they won't be in line for the technical um, the technical support. Uh, but if I'm not available, if you have an emergency, you can always contact them there. And the little bell is for any notification. So there are new books uh, at CEC, so you will have a notification or it can be uh, maintenance uh, updates uh, like uh, my CEC won't be available uh, tonight. Or um. And finally, if we go back at um, the top uh, left uh, in the menu, so bookshelf, this is where uh, the magic happens. Now this is um, where uh, everything you find your book, this is where you create your, your group as I just did. If you want to add a new book, so you did have fresh 
mistake, you want to add fresh start, you already add maybe prospect two days workplace, you, you want to add a new content, I provided you um, a code. So this is where add a content, you can uh, always add a new book. And then if I continue into the menu, group management. So uh, you'll surely have less than uh, what I do have on my screen right now. It would just appear, but uh, this is where you can retreat your groups. And of course you can delete uh, them afterwards. So if you have after the semester or after the year, you want to get rid of your uh, groups, you can always delete them. And this is where you can retrieve the access key to share it back uh, via Omnivox, Lia, me, or what you um, communicate with your students. Um, and then, so this is only, uh, oh yeah, and I just maybe want to uh, show you if you have uh, some members into um, a group, let's say we just take one and I have, I know I have some that I have some, let's say he, here, okay. So you will have the name of your students. So once they join you, your class, you will always see your students appear into your group. Settings, uh, here this is, so uh, you can go directly onto my zone CRSA or my CEC zone, or you can switch the uh, application language. Show to tool tips. So little bubbles when you are going over a tool to, that uh, is telling you what it is directly. Um, if you want to reactivate tutorials, uh, elementary theme no i know on that uh, but it can be funny right and then okay so this is just the same as we have at the top so uh, just two ways of doing things report an error is the same as we saw uh, at the top right and the uh, the right way to log out of the um the platform and in here here in your profile, you can always change. Uh, your students can upload uh, a different picture. Uh, you can change if you are changing your email address, you want to change your password. So this is where uh, you can change all of your, your options. And if I log out and I maybe just go back, uh, there's something, uh, maybe the last point I want to uh, share with you. Um, my CEC song. Okay, so uh, there's a... Um, it's, I think it's important because this is uh, something that is happening right now. A lot of uh, devices can be used with my C season. So right now I'm on a laptop, computer, a PC. Uh, you can log in through uh, the Google Chrome browser, right? So don't use Mozilla Firefox for security matters or even the, all the Internet Explorer. Always go through Chrome. And then if you just go down, um, you can see you can download, in fact, uh, to have access to your uh, textbook offline. So if you or your students are using Android tablets, if they are using an iPad, they are using uh, a Mac, you can uh, download uh, directly the program and it will do a shortcut on your desktop to access it. And the first time you will access to um, your, uh, your offline, you will have a little cloud um, and you will be able to download the book offline. So if you're at your chalet or you don't have any Wi-Fi and you can still annotate your book. And then once you uh, go back, uh, it will synchronize when it will um, detect an internet connection. And this is the same for your students. They can um, download as well for all, all the info are here on our, on our website. Oh, I think uh, I um, I forgot something, Patrick. I'm so sorry. Just want to go back a quick sec. Um, no the problem, resources. No I forgot to um, I think click on that particular folder that is pretty important because this is uh, one folder that um, are uh, every you can find everything for your teacher as uh, in PDF format or modifiable uh, Word document. Um, fresh take. But this is the same for all of our books. So we went into class line, into activities. We went into the audios, the videos here. You have a folder where you can download when you adopt our book. Um, all of the resources for the teacher, um, as Patrick uh, talked about. So you got a folder with all of your transcripts. So you have 10 uh, documents in here. The grammar answer key. So if you maybe you want your uh, student to do autonomous correction for the grammar part, then you can share with them the PDF of the uh, grammar evaluation task. So this is, I think, the most important one. So um, you to download it, you have to click a little cloud, right, to download the, directly the document. So you always have both options. Uh, teachers who just want to send the PDF because everything is okay, then they do have the PDF 
everything is ready. Or maybe if you want to modify something uh, because you have many groups or because there is maybe a question that you would have done uh, differently. So you can modify um, every evaluation task for each of the team. So you can see for all of the teams, um, you do have all of the evaluation here. And then I can go back here. I'm just at your left. Evaluation tasks, uh, the answers. So to help you out with your correction, the evaluation evaluation task videos, the evaluation grids, um, the grammar quick guide. Uh, I think Patrick talked about it uh, earlier. So you can, uh, this is a PDF, so you can, uh, or your students can download it and uh, have access to it or even print it if they want. I think this one is okay for uh, to print and the lot with the full text. So I, uh, I, I wish I was not too quick. But I think I went uh, over everything that uh, was into the platform. 